Good morning, please stand. If any fourth or fifth graders brought their hymnals today or if you're watching online with your hymnal, we're gonna be singing Immaculate Mary, number 203.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. by whom we are redeemed and receive our adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, 
I offer the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free to, in regard to all, I have made my a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. I have become all things to all, save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have share in it. Do you not know what the runners in the stadium are running in the race, but only one wins the prize? Run so as to win. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, but we an imperishable one. Thus, I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. No, I drive my body and train it, for fear that, after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. Blessed they who dwell in your house, continually they praise you. Blessed the men whose strength you are, their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. For a sun and a shield is the Lord God. Grace and glory he bestows. The Lord withholds no good thing from those who walk in sincerity. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord mighty God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye 
when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye. You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Paul talks today about running. Who here likes to run? Only the children raise their hands because every adult has discovered that running is terrible. But St. Paul says life is often like running a race. When we think of a race, what do we think about? Usually running on a track, right? And tracks are kind of just like big circles. And sometimes life is like that, just a big circle, room, room, again and again. Same thing, over and over. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, just a big circle. And it's important to learn how to run in a circle sometimes, to learn that endurance, to be able to stick with it even when it's kind of a little boring, maybe the same thing over and over, because something important is happening. But when I think of a race right now, what we've been going through um, in our area, it seems not so much like a race in a circle, it seems more like a ninja warrior race. You guys ever seen that show, Ninja Warrior? Or maybe, uh, what's the new one out on Netflix, The Floor is Lava, something like that, where they have all these obstacle courses. So you're not just running in a circle, you're like having to run and jump and grab a rope and swing over a big thing of water and drop off and then climb up a wall as like oil pours down it and you have to slide around. All kinds of challenges and obstacles like that. Sometimes life feels like that. Because you're doing one thing and you get used to it and then another thing comes at you. So you have to adapt. Then you start doing that and another thing. And there's just all these changes. So it's like we're, we're, we're dealing with this pandemic and hey, Here's a bunch of smoke for you. Deal with that. Other places have had it even worse with serious natural disasters that they've had to endure. And so St. Paul tells us, life is like this. You're training, you're learning to endure. And it reminds me of a great quote from Pope Benedict. I mentioned a quote to you all last time we were together. What was that quote? Uh, our heart. You have made us for yourself, O God, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Well, today Pope Benedict says something different. He says, the world offers you comfort. The world offers you comfort. But you weren't made for comfort. You're made for greatness. And often so much what we're trying to get in our lives is just comfort. That's what we want. And sometimes when we pray to God, that's our prayer. Lord, make me comfortable. Just wrap me in a big, soft blankie. And give me some hot chocolate. And let me just sit here on the couch. And that's okay. Sometimes God does that. Sometimes we're tired and we need that help. And God comes and comforts us. Just grabs us and holds us. Makes us feel secure and safe. But there's other times when he says, nap time is over. It's time to get up. Because there's a world out there. There's things you need to do, things you need to experience, and we need to grow. God's not okay with us letting us just remain small and weak and tiny. He wants us to grow. And that's the thing about being a Christian. When you sign up for being a Christian, when you're baptized, when you guys in a few years go and get confirmed, you're signing up to be something great and to do something great. And actually, when you used to get confirmed, you know what the bishop would do to you? The bishop comes, he confirms you, he'd give you a little slap on the cheek. We don't do that so much anymore, we'll probably get in trouble. Maybe just a little, a little tap. But the reason the bishop used to give you a slap on the cheek is he was like, hey, 
Get ready. You're starting the battle. Get ready. So that's the call from the Lord. Life's difficult. Lots of things are going to be thrown at you. And you can just sit around and complain if you want and whine and stay inside and be bored. Or you can take the challenge of life knowing that God's doing something in it. God's forming you. And God has a plan for you. And it's a plan of greatness. And I remember when I first discovered how good our faith can be, I was just amazed by it. And like St. Paul, I wanted to tell everyone, when you guys are growing up in the faith, sometimes it's just your parents are telling you to do a bunch of things. If you had it up to you, you wouldn't wake up on Sunday mornings or Friday mornings and run to church maybe. Your parents say, we got to go to church. But eventually you discover there's something beautiful and something really good in our faith. If you live it, it can really make you happy. So much that you want to go and tell the people, hey, you got to try this out. There's something really good here. So I hope all of us can live the faith like that and discover what's truly good about it. And take the challenge. Run the race. Whether if it just means running around in circles and sticking with it and not giving up. Or if it means being ready to adapt to every new challenge, every new obstacle that comes our way. God is forming us. And what's most beautiful is we're not alone in it. God is with us at absolutely every second. Never far from us. And also we have one another. We have a beautiful community. Great friends here at the parish and at the school. And we run the race together. Not to beat one another. Not to simply be the best. But to get there to the end with one another. And enjoy all the good things that God has prepared for us. Let us now stand and offer all of our prayers and our needs to God. We pray for the world in these difficult times, that God give us great courage and strength to face the many challenges that we encounter each day, but he also give us grace to lovingly help one another, especially those who are most in need. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the church, that we discover the goodness of God. We discover the joy God has prepared for us in our lives, the joy of living the life of love God desires for us, and that we can help draw many other friends and family and people we know to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are sick, all those who are struggling, all those who are going through a hard time right now, especially anyone who's discouraged or who has lost hope, God, renew them, give them grace. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our parish school, for all the children and your families, that God help us in this year to find new ways of learning, new ways to be creative and to journey together through this school year. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have died, especially those we know and love, those who are close to us, those who have known to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer all these prayers to you, along with all the intentions and needs we carry within our own hearts into this Mass. We draw them to this altar and offer them in union with the offering of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory song is the Jesus Song. For those of you who have a hymnal, it is number 406. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God.
For your brothers and sisters of my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who give us a gift of true prayer and of peace, and graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of this sacred mystery we may faithfully be united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you and the redeemed praise you. And all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
for all those participating in this Mass from home. We unite ourselves now with the Lord in this act of spiritual communion as we pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said you stand at the door knocking, desiring to enter in. We trust in your desire to be with us in this moment and your power to effect what you desire. We ask that you be with us in the fullness of your presence, body and blood, soul and divinity within our own hearts. May you stay with us this moment and remain with us throughout our day. Bless us and care for us. Enter our mind, our heart, our affections and desires. Transform us from within. Help us never to leave this intimacy with you, but to know that as you are in the Father, so you are in us and we in you. Amen. Communion song is One Love Released, number 358.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gift that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I believe we have an announcement from our principal. Well, kids, it's great to see you right here, as well as you adults. It's great to see you. But here we are on our second school mass, and many of you have been able to attend. And today we heard God's word as Father was teaching it to us. And that thing about blind guides, not wanting to be someone who's unaware of the ways of God, and the way you become so aware of the ways of God is that you have guides before you that are there ready to teach, first and foremost in your families, first and foremost to be asking your mother, your father, your grandparents to be guiding you and teaching you the ways of the Lord. You have your teachers, many of them here today, who are guiding you specifically in the ways of the Lord. And then you yourselves will grow and you will be guides to younger brothers and sisters as well. And that is my prayer, is that you will run that race in the way to win. But to win in God's eyes is to win that which is imperishable. As our lovely Daniela read to us so well from God's word today, and we'll be hearing from more of our fifth grade readers as we go, we want to seek that which is eternal, the ways of God. And I am just so joyful to be with you in our ministry here at the school in hoping that I too would be one of those joining all of these teachers and your parents and grandparents in guiding you. Seek to follow those who are wa walking with the Lord. Amen and amen. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Go in peace, glorifying God by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our sending forth song is In the Day of the Lord, number 576. Good to see you all. Have a great day.